In this video, we solve problem 11.1.038 from the Larson Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, seventh edition. We're asked to find the unit vector in the direction of a given vector v. And this vector is given in terms of standard unit vectors, i hat and j hat. I personally prefer component form, so I will write it this way. The x component is negative 6.5. The y component is 3.1. I think most students actually know how to do this. Um, the operation itself, um, the, the process of finding a unit vector is pretty straightforward, but the students tend to be a little bit thrown off by the fact that WebAssign simplifies the answer. And because WebAssign simplifies the answer, it, it looks um, inconsistent with what your intuition might be uh, for what the unit vector in the direction of V ought to be. Um, so let's, um, First, just find that unit vector. And then after we find that unit vector, we'll simplify it so that it looks like the vector they have in WebAssign. And then we'll confirm that it's actually one unit long, even though the numbers involved seem unnecessarily large, because that's what the students are, are telling me. All right, so if I want a unit vector, I'm going to put a hat on it because all my unit vectors wear hats. Um, all I have to do is take the vector that I have, find out how long it is, and then divide by that length. So if this was 15 units long, I would divide by 15, and then I'd have a vector that points in the same direction that is only one unit long. We're gonna do that here. Now you can use this notation with the double bars, or you can use this other notation that looks more like absolute value. That's my preference. After calculus three, um, you'll see this more um, but in calculus three, this is the notation we tend to use. So really, we're just gonna take the vector with components negative 6.5 and 3.1, and we'll divide by this length. Um, so that's the plan. We have stated our formula. Next, I think we need to compute the magnitude of V. Now the magnitude and the length are pretty much the same thing. They're going to be the same thing whenever the vector is just some geometric object. Um, if it represents, if a vector represents something like force or acceleration or velocity, um, some quantity from physics, in that case, the magnitude and the length of the vector may not be the same. They would just be proportional to each other. But here, if I were to draw this in the xy plane, um, the magnitude and its length would be interchangeable. So remember how we find the length. We take the components, we square them and add them and take the square root. Now I'm going to use my scientific calculator to do this calculation. I've got negative 6.5. I'm squaring that, then I'm adding 3.1 squared. I get that fraction, I wanna take the square root of my answer and I get that. Now that is obviously a decimal approximation of, of something else. So let's go back. I had negative 6.5. I wanna square that and then add 3.1 squared. So that was uh, 2,593 over 50, oops. And we're taking the square root of that. Since I don't want a decimal approximation, I think I will just leave it like that. Um, now, at this point, we've got the magnitude of V, it's right here. And then we've got the vector V itself right there. So we're gonna take this guy and we'll divide by this guy. And remember dividing by a scalar is the same as just multiplying by the reciprocal of that scalar. So you're just gonna multiply each of these components by one over this, or alternatively, just think of taking each component separately and dividing by that scalar. So I have negative 6.5 over the square root. And then we'll have positive 3.1 over the square root for our y component of our unit vector. Now, I don't think WebAssign will like that answer. 
I'm pretty sure this is not what they have in the answer key, um, but we can simplify this in order to make it look like the answer that they have online. So we all we did at this point was we computed u hat by dividing each component of v. by the magnitude of V. All right, now we're just gonna simplify. There are a, a few things here um, that you might notice. We've got a decimal in the numerator for both of these guys. We also have a fraction under a radical in the denominator for both of these. We'd like to get rid of both. We'd like to clean this up a little bit. So maybe this is just a single fraction and that's just a single fraction. Well, since this is negative 6.5 and we've got this five in the tenths place, we'll multiply by 10 over 10 for both of those. And that will get rid of the decimal. With our fractions, we multiply straight across. So we're gonna have negative 65 over something down here and 31 over something down here. Now for this 10 that's multiplying this radical, it would be helpful to rewrite it in terms of radicals as well, because we know that this, this fact from um, just arithmetic or beginning algebra, that if you have the square root of A times the square root of B, that's the square root of A times B. So if I can write this as the square root of something, well then I can multiply the expressions under the square root together and simplify it and write it as a single square root. So that's the plan. A 10 we know is the square root of 100. So I'll just write it that way. And then I'll multiply these two guys together. And of course, the arithmetic from here is very simple. 50 goes into 100 twice. And 2593 times 2 is, oops, 5186. So we have negative 65 over the square root of 5186 and 31 over the square root of 5186. Now, again, my students look at that and say, that doesn't look like a unit vector. That looks much larger than um, I expected. But um, remember this radical square root of, of that number, it's actually around 72. So I'm actually taking negative 65 and I'm dividing it by something close to 72 for my x component. And then I'm taking 31 and I'm dividing it by something close to 72 for my y component. So these are numbers between zero and one, which is what we would expect with the unit vector. Now, if we square these and add them together and take the square root, we should get one. Because remember, the length of a unit vector is one. Like that's how we design this. We took a vector and we divided by its length and it should be one unit long when we're done. So that's how we can always check our answer. Okay, so let's check. It should be one unit long. So that means if we compute the magnitude of our unit vector, we should get one of negative 65 squared over the square root of 5186 squared. When you square a fraction, you just square the numerator and denominator separately, remember? I know you guys are in Calc 3, you know this stuff, but. Sometimes it's been a while, you just need a quick refresher. Uh, 65 squared, which is the same as negative 65 squared, is 4,225. 31 squared is 961. Both of these guys have the same denominator. You take the square root of something and then you square it. Just those two operations undo each other. You get 5186. Let's see if that numerator is 5186. It is. So we've got the square root of 5186 over 5186 with the square root of one, which is one. 
So um, our unit vector is truly a unit vector. And um, that's how we answer that question. And that's how WebAssign gets you to, to this point. Um, so again, intuitively, you might look at these numbers and think that they're too large. But if you get a decimal approximation of that denominator, it's actually around 72. So this number is between zero and one, and this number is between zero and one. Um, so there's, there's uh, nothing there's nothing wrong with that answer, even though you might think initially that it's it's too big uh, to be a unit vector. Um, those those components are actually pretty small. <laughs>